Time keeps on leaving and we keep on moving. When do we pass on our wisdom to the youth? My veteran story, lost ours discussions, fireside chats with the bourbon or two. It's time to hear the story by military veterans. Get yourself ready. It's the Lost Arts Podcast. The Lost Arts with Andrew Cox. Hello, hello, my friends, and welcome back to the Lost Art Podcast. That podcast is giving a voice to our veterans. Thank you for coming in and tuning in today. Uh, we have uh, Master Gunner Sergeant Retired Ramon Villa back for part two to explain the rest of his career and go through it. I'm super excited about this. Uh, but uh, for everyone out there, um, if you want to be a guest on the podcast at some point in time, uh, shoot me an email, the lost art with Andrew Cox at gmail.com. Again, that's lost art with Andrew Cox at gmail.com. Uh, also, if you want to, by chance, help us out, uh, send in a donation, something like that. You can become a TLA patron. Just go to our website, click on the TLA patron site, and then you'll be able to uh, give a monthly donation. If you don't want to do that, you want a, just a one-time donation, there is a link. If you scroll down on the website, you'll be able to click on that link and be able to give that one-time donation. Any donation is uh, absolutely wonderful, and it helps us as we move forward this podcast and making sure that we're getting our veteran voices out for everyone to hear. All right, with that being said, uh, please welcome back for part two, Master Gunner Sergeant Retired Ramon Villa. Ramon, how you doing tonight? Good, how are you? How are you? Oh, I'm doing excellent, can't complain. <laughs> All right. Last time we talked, we were we were ending up at uh, drill instructor duty, uh, where that's where the first time that we kind of met each other, uh, and then you were able to to move on from there. Uh, why don't we talk through like the end of your drill instructor time, moving into that next duty station? Yeah. So, um, well, thanks for having me back on, Andrew. I appreciate it. Yeah. You know, I always say what you're doing here uh, is, is awesome. Give veterans a voice, and and those of you that are listening. Yeah, reach out to Andrew. Get on here. Tell your story. It's a very chill, welcoming in environment here, and uh, you know, easy to talk to. And uh, I think uh, even before this podcast, we sat down for about a half hour and just chewed the fat a little bit too. So it was it was all good. So I'm I'm That's glad right. to be back on. Yeah. So you know, after I got done with the successful tour on the drill field, um, which you know, not well, everybody can do, by the way. Yeah, you know, it's it's an it's an accomplishment, you know. Uh, went back to school of music for the advanced training. Uh, back then, I had the ceremonial conductor and drum major course. And, and right. then uh, once – then they asked me to do – they offered me the opportunity to do back-to-back. -back. So I did mm -hmm. that, and then I went straight into the EB, the enlisted band leader course. And then from there, after graduating the enlisted band leader course, then I went back to California to Miramar. Uh, as an uh, enlisted conductor there. So, you know, I had done, I had done a, like the last podcast, I had done a tour at Quantico uh -huh. uh, at, a, at, a, at a garrison command. Then I went to the an expeditionary unit, 3MF band. And then now I am at a wing. So, you know, right. I'm kind of moving around, getting some You're hitting them the all. flavors. Everything yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting the flavors of everything, you know. So it was again a good, good experience, and I, I went over there as the uh, enlisted conductor uh, for the band. Some of them might know that might equate this to being kind of like the the assistant conductor, um, but right. uh, it was a good tour. Um, you know, that was uh, you know sometime after um, 9 9/11. 9 11 actually happened when I was on the drill field. Uh, oh. And then, yeah, it actually happened when I was on the drill field, and it was before um, the stop loss had occurred. Okay. So I left. The, I left the drill field, went to school for about a, a year, um, well, more than a year, uh, and then to Miramar. Then you know, some ramping ups started to happen there. Um, about six weeks, six to eight weeks, I believe, after I checked into the school of music. Uh, the band's on a plane. The band's on the plane in support of Operation Enduring Freedom, mm -hmm. uh, and we did we did our 
we did our tour there in uh, in Kuwait. Uh, mm -hmm. We did our tour there in Kuwait uh, during that time, and then uh, we spent about I think it was about four to six months there, and then and then we're coming. Then we came back home. You know, okay. after that. What four exactly? Or six months. While you were there, what were you doing? Well, it was kind of an interesting uh, move uh, being over there. Uh, so what they ended up doing is when when we they they had sent the adv an advance party there uh, of a couple of, of a few uh, band leadership to kind of establish. They always do that. You send an advance party, kind of establish, you know, getting ready for uh, the transition, you know, or, right. or the, you know, when you're bringing in uh, or when the unit's coming in. So you know, they had, they, they were still building the camp at that time with, uh, with, with structures and sandbags and, and all of that stuff. So if you want to paint the picture, we were actually on Al Jabber Air Base in Kuwait. Half okay. of the base on the other side of the berm was the Air Force. Everything beautifully established. Yeah. On the other of side of this berm, which is a small little hill, you know, separating the two of this berm was the Marine side, which was canvas tents, uh, <laughs> gravel roads. I don't even, uh, uh, rows of porta johns. And I don't think even when I got there, they were, um, what we call comfort traders, which were shower facilities. We had to kind of hike our way to the Air Force side to, to take a shower, but everything right. was Porta Johns. Uh, later on, they brought comfort chairs. In. But but what ended up happening there is half the band, or I should say, the junior enlisted sergeant and below of the band, um, they went to go augment the Air Force security force for the base. Okay. So they were out there doing kind of base ops and running security on the base in their Humvees. The staff and COs were left in on the other side. Uh, the marine, the, what I would call the the, the undeveloped side, the marine <laughs> side, the, the undeveloped side, uh, right. we were left over there and um, to to do support. In, in particular, there were three of us that uh, had some specific roles, and that was uh, uh, a gentleman by the name of uh, Raul Caldera, who at mm -hmm. the time was a staff sergeant. Raul okay. Caldera. Um, he was assigned as the the camp commandant, which okay. was kind of like, you know, uh, camp commandant being kind of the facilities, the manager of the camp on behalf of the commanding officer. And then right. a, uh, a Marine staff and by the name of Sean Stewart, mm -hmm. who was responsible uh, for overseeing equipment, uh, third country nationals, uh, supplies coming in and outside for the Marine side of the house uh, on, right. on Al Jabber. Now, uh -huh. st at the time, Staff Sergeant Villa was actually assigned as what they called the squadron gunnery sergeant. So, so that's kind of, well, that was my role at the time uh, is to be the squadron uh, gunnery sergeant, at, you know, for that. So we did a couple of, a couple of runs, you know, a few runs, you know, out in town, um, nothing in up armored hard Humvees or anything. We always went, um, armed but in uh it, in the, the vehicle was called the pajero which was basically an isuzu suv so we would all go there we we go to ali Salam and, and stuff like that um one thing in particular that i did was you know we'd make runs out there with supplies and you know tra and, and take any con uh, communications gear from you know one one uh one base to another there in Kuwait. Mm -hmm. But then also what they would send me out to do is they found out that I was a, bu I was a trumpet player. All yeah. trumpets are buglers. So they would send me out on um, uh, to the different uh, uh, operating bases out there to do memorial services. And if any of you, man, this is a, I'm really dating myself, but back then there was an Associated Press photo. If anybody can remember. There was a CH-53 and a Bugler, Associated Press right. photo, uh, Bugler, uh, CH-53 and a Bugler, and in the distance was the sunset, and, you know, the Bugler mm -hmm. had a you know, gas mask on the side and everything. Well, that was me. An Associated Press photo was taken of me at the time. Right. So, yeah, next time I'm on, I'll, I'll find the newspaper clipping. I didn't even know it was taken. All of a sudden, I get this letter from, I think, my my uncle and uh, with this with this photo you know, this newspaper yeah. clipping. And I'm like, Oh, look, I'm in the newspaper. What 
you know, it's a, you know, associate, it's an AP news on the bottom of it. I was like, wow, I'm famous, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. So that, that's what, you know, a couple of things that I did, but you know, everything yeah. that a squadron gunny does, you know, for uh, the squadron, you know, that was kind of my role. You during okay. that. And we came back, you know, we came back, all of us came back, um, you know, thankfully we came, we came back. Say, well, well I, let me pause there is once the, once that uh, term was done or once that, once the, I guess once victory was declared, you know, right. in, you know, with, with that movement of operation enduring freedom, the general took his band and we kind of did, you know, troop goodwill um, concerts, you know, throughout Iraq. So they would load us into helos and we'd go into Iraq and it was, it was actually kind of cool uh, for us, um, you know, getting, uh, going into some of the bases and amphitheaters where Saddam would, you know, be addressing, you know, his troops and, you know, now right. we're playing America the Beautiful, you know, uh-huh. at these amphitheaters. And it, it was kind of a cool thing, you know, there Correct. as well. Uh, um, you went to uh, Babylon uh, while yeah, you were there? Yeah, we actually did. did. Yeah, I, I yeah, remember we actually, that photo specifically, yeah. Yeah, we actually went to um, to the ruins of Babylon. We got to take a little tour of that, and then we did a concert there in, in the amphitheater of Babylon as well. Really so, cool. Yeah. And, and yeah, I know we, the last podcast you talked about you being a religious individual, you know, and, and you look at that area and, and everything that's going on in Babylon and, you know, back during the Bible times, things of that nature. I know for me, when I... <laughs> When I deployed there, that was very uh, like just to see the uh, the individuals, the shepherds and their sheep and, and things of that nature. Absolutely incredible. And it made made the Bible that much more vivid in my memory. Uh, so I'm sure playing in Babylon uh, was huge, uh, you know, in your mind, at least when you're looking. Not, at that. Absolutely. But not as much as playing an Easter sunrise service when the sun is coming up, knowing oh. that you were in, you were, you were in the same time, the same time zone when the crack of dawn and the stone was rolled away as the sun came up, you know, they're playing an Easter sunrise service as the sun is coming up, Holy. knowing that you're sitting there probably at the same time, same hour when the stone was rolled. That was really, I mean, all of that, you know, the Babylon trip and all those goodwill, you know, things were really, really cool. Um, but um, that was really, really neat, you know. Um, That's absolutely for me, for me to experience. Yeah, it was a good experience. Um, you know, uh, yeah, it, it was a good experience. You know, uh, you know, always, always when you're doing stuff like that, coming home is is no matter, you know, at what level you know, you're at being gone that long and coming home is, is a little bit of a, is a little bit of a transition for all of us as, as you know, you're, you're well aware. Oh many yeah. Of us on this podcast are, are, are well aware as well. Yeah. So, you know, um, you know, after that tour was done, it was about a year to the day. I walk in after doing a, doing a commitment with the band, to get off the bus and I'm the one with the band, and I walk in and I see Sean Stewart putting on his uh, putting on his belt and holster. Uh-oh. And at that moment, and at that moment, I knew, oh, yeah, man, not again. Yeah, and and then we were back again for we this time we were in Al Assad, mm-hmm. uh, and I was there for about ten months, and we were doing uh, security for um, the general's compound. They're right. on, on, on all Assad. <clears throat> so mm-hmm. yeah, didn't leave the base. You know, I, I, I don't, I don't remember leaving that base. There was just way, way too much, you know, going on, uh, on that base, you know, as far yeah. as, you know, security and, and things coming in, you know, from God, from God knows where things were flying to you, yeah. you know, but uh, yeah, but that was, um, that was, that was that second, that was that second tour within that that small time frame um of my first year? half at miramar or so i get to one, i get another yeah i get to miramar about six to eight weeks later i'm gone for about four to six months come yeah. back for about a, come back for just a little just a little under a year and then mm-hmm. we're back again we're going back yeah. again 
once that was completed, then I did a couple of other things with the band, um, you know, still as an assistant, you know, a conductor. Uh, uh-huh. And then I actually, um, once I got back, they're like, oh, my gosh, you're a former drill instructor. Yes, I was. Can, can you run the corporal's leadership course for us? I'm like, sure. Why not? Nice. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, I was a course director for the corporal's leadership course for the for the um, for the squadron. Uh, as soon as I was done with that, I got an email moving me yeah. to Camp Pendleton. Moving okay. me to Camp Pendleton. Moving me to Camp Pendleton. And uh, about a year later, no, about six months later. I'm sorry, about six months later. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm in Fallujah. At that yeah. time. No, that so was with, the second second time you and I were together was when you came back up to Camp Pendleton. So that's where I was at the point. I uh, just completed a deployment the same time frame uh, about that you were there uh, on your second deployment was my deployment with that I went with. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember leaving uh, at the end of our tour. We we're leaving. We ended up in Al-Assad. For whatever reason, you know, flights or whatever, I don't know. We we had some time. It was, to it was a it was a stopping point for you all. Yeah, yeah I remember. Yeah. And I remember going over to your compound, saying hi to everybody, things like that. Uh, that was a very interesting time. You probably don't even remember that. I remember that uh, very vividly. Uh, but uh, yeah, I I, I, ha- I have a picture of me. Um, what was his uh, Jones? Yeah, Jones. Uh, yeah. Payton and Glimpka, I have a yep. picture of us in the compound together, standing together. As no, yeah, yeah. I, I still have a picture of us. Yep. Yeah, so I was I was still a sergeant at the time. Obviously, I'm a little little behind the times with you, but uh, I was a sergeant at the time. Still, uh, my buddy Vic Nay, who we grew up together and everything, we discussed about him earlier. But um, yeah, we, that's right. We, Nay was with us. Yeah, Nay was with us. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was, yeah, and that, I'll, was I'll, that was interesting. Uh, we grew up together. We ended up, you know, in Iraq at the same time, uh, and and being able to see each other. And then you were there, uh, like you said, Jones, Glimka, um, uh, Peyton. Uh, that was a very interesting time for me. Uh, and again, very influential in my career. And guess who's there? You are. Well, thanks. You know, that was um, that was a long. Uh, you know, I, I went as advanced party and, and that was a long, that was a long tour uh, for me. It was, it was during the holidays, which, you know, a lot of us experience that, that distance from your families during the holidays. You know, fortunately we had a, we had a good support network back home where, you know, spouses became pretty close with one another and they would send, you know, although we weren't at Christmas at home, we were Christmas in a, in a hooch. You yeah. Know, we were a you know, we're a Marine Corps birthday in a in a tent. You know, <laughs> with the uh, with the food and stuff. Uh, and and uh, we we had a calendar up there, and you know, we tried to do our best. You know, to to you know just to you know to make it as best as we could for the situation that we're in. Um, yeah. I think some of the neatest. I think some of the neatest things is, believe it or not, is is with Vic Nay and some of the other guys sitting on those you know because you're you're in those places sometimes and it's like you know it's 122 125 you know out there so when it gets yeah. down to one so when it gets down to 115 I mean, it's like <laughs> spring it's like spring. yeah so, you know, absolutely. I, I, I do have yeah i do have a lot of um good memories of uh myself Vic nay and some other people after a long long day you know on duty you know sitting mm-hmm. back you know, of the, of the guard shack and we had a little smoke pit and reminiscing yeah. on the day with the, with a good cigar. You know? Yeah. Um, well, well, wrong with yeah. That. So uh, yeah, it was, it was not uncommon that, you know, what, what did you send troops back then? You, you sent them, you know, during seasons, you sent them Girl Scout cookies. Okay. Got it. Oh, but you yeah. always sent, you always sent wet wipes, beef jerky, and and cigars that's what you said to the most you said important to things uh on a deployment in my opinion yeah yep well me was me was wet wipes <laughs> yeah. man wet wipes yeah take care yeah wet wipes needed them especially when the you know when the water go out or you're sweating or you just yep. you, you get to you you get to port you <laughs> You get to Portageon and there's nothing left in, in, in the little rolling <laughs> thing. 
you know, yeah. you know, you always got your cargo pockets with wet wipes. You know, you know that. It was fun <laughs> that, that point in time. Yeah, I remember yeah. that vividly. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So yeah, you know, there was, you know, there was, yeah, there was some. Um, I always, I always, I was the guard chief for the day for the day evolutions. It was uh, myself and, uh, like I said again, uh, a very awesome marine. Um, I don't know if he's still in Raúl Caldera. Um, I, uh, I don't he, know if he's retired. Raúl Caldera's still in? not retired yet. He'll be retiring uh, later this year. But yes, he yeah. is. What? Well, shout out to Raúl. Um, you, uh, at, you know, you, uh, you, you made that tour really easy on me because you were a good uh assistant guard chief really really good assistant guard chief and you know of course uh, that's where i met his wife uh nina there as well she was on that deployment too nina caldera was on that deployment yep nina nina was on that that. deployment yeah i would i would yeah they were and and they were they were just friends at the time you know at at that were they both in the band at that point no, Nina was not in the band. Nina was with okay. another, in another unit, you know, but, you know, and again, I hope Caldera is listening to this because I'm just going to give a shout out to Caldera, awesome Marine, you know, Nina, awesome Marine, but also what I've seen over the years, awesome Marine spouse supporting your husband uh, through his embassy duty time, you know, now in the band, you've just been a, a super solid rock and, and what I've seen, you know, through you and, and on social media, just, just a very, very positive part of, of Raul's life. And, you know, um, it was, it was good. It was good. It, it is good knowing you and it, and it's good having served with, with Raul. He was a super, super duper guard chief, you know, made, made very, very, made everything very, um, uh, you know, when I get a little bit excited about things, Raul would, Raul would be like, all right, Hey, Gunny, Gunny, I got it. I got it again. Let me take care of it. Be like, okay. <laughs> Take care of it, Staff Sergeant, and, and he would he would handle it in a very good way. Yeah, I I gotta say real quick, uh, uh, I love Caldera. He's a great dude. Um, uh, but I I'm not a hundred percent certain that uh, he would he was always spot on. You know, I like to give him a hard time. So <laughs> anytime I can give uh, Caldera a hard time, it's a, it's a good day. Um, I always got good good experiences. The other one was probably one of my best. Um, 240 gun tower um marines was uh-huh. um was i don't know if she's i don't know if she's master gunny now but uh state c crowder oh she will be soon yeah crowder. yeah stays uh master gunny master gunny select right yes correct yeah. yes well, hey, man, I'm telling you, that 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 devil dog could knew how to handle to knew how to handle that gun tower i'm telling you right now she was just Really, really good staff sergeant. Really, really good sergeant back in the day, and I'm just so happy that you know her that she has seen nothing but success in Marine Corps. So another shout out to you, there, Stacy, and, and thanks for the several invites that you had given me while you were the assistant drum major for the president's own. You know, I uh, extend, yeah, I know extending out that hand and inviting my family and I um, up there to um, to uh, to be part of to be part of that experience. So really good. Another, he, he really uh, is yeah. great great people she's been on the uh podcast previously when we did fireside chats and stuff like that uh but she is fantastic individual i got to serve with her here at the school of music as the first time we ever served together just recently yeah. uh she's a master as a master gunny and man just uh yeah. fireball of an individual and absolutely hilarious yeah. uh I, I it was a great time serving she's, with her. she's really down she is really down to earth you know she is a yeah. uh she, she's she's a good soul um but you know it's it's like you know we're here talking about people that we've come across with you know it just kind of you know those of us listening in could just kind of pair that off with you know think about and reminisce about just good people that that you served with you know also in 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 just kind of probably not the best of circumstances but you endured <laughs> something yeah you you y'all endured in something together and uh you know and you know, you, you share those moments and, and you have something to you have something to talk about later. Um, the other one that was there with us was was then was then um, once staff sergeant, but now Master Gunnery Sergeant R.C. De- deployed with us also during that tour. Yeah. So, yeah. Who is who is since retired just like you? Uh, and, and I think he's in the California, if I'm not mistaken, still. Uh, yeah. And he, and yeah. He, uh, he was working. He was yes, doing so. some stuff with the VA. Wasn't he? Yeah, 
be a veteran support yeah. officer, I think, for a while. I don't know if he's still doing that, but uh, uh, that's yeah, an but individual I probably should reach out to and, and see if he, he'd be he, one, but. he is. You know, and, and and here's the thing: is you 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 got you got you know guys that guys and gals that we serve with that you know have retired and and like yourself, you know that have done nothing and know nothing but serving each other, serving fellow service members, serving Marines, you know, you name it, you know, and, and they have no, they have no, they're, they're, they're compelled to continue that service after, after they get out. And, you know, that's just something that, you know, for us, when we cross that yellow, when we cross that parade deck and receive that Eagle Globe and anchor, you know, it's just kind of, we're, we're, we're wired like that. We're born, you know, we're, we're yeah. born like that as well. well you really, know? you you did the same thing because when you retired, you uh, you were still working uh, to help the military. You know, you you did. Um, uh, I can't remember what it's called now. Yeah, but, <laughs> it, uh, it, they're called them um, at the time. So I retired in the, my first job after retirement. I was a family readiness officer, there which now go. they call them deployment readiness I'll be honest, I, don't, I, I don't know what they call them now, but yeah, I think I I think back then the Marine Corps during that 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 deployment, you know, I, I think they I think they had um they had a good program mm-hmm. where instead of having you know volu- and you know nothing to say with volunteers because they've always been very successful volunteers in various commands stepping up, but in in this case. The Marine Corps actually hired, and, and they still do in, in some commands. They they hired um, uh, non they, through non appropriated funds. They hired uh, professionals to to manage that program and to organize the volunteers and to offer the services to service members and their families. Um, you know, through deployments or through through in my case, uh, you know, helping the the younger entry level students kind of become acclimatized to the military life and and to help believe it or not to help their families become acclimatized to that military life that their that their um that that, that their child or the, their is, is experiencing at the time and then once that uh, program kind of left the command I went off to be a single marine program coordinator um, yeah. which was fun. You know, the thing I liked about that is is there was a lot of, and I made it a point during that time, we'll get back to the deployment stuff later, but, you know, during that time, I had my, my program director ask me, you know, what I wanted to do with it. And I says, no, not only do I want to provide, um, you know, uh, the Marines, uh, you know, off-duty opportunity, you know, these off-duty activities to, to, to participate in them, but I wanted to formulate a council together to help them create the program to lead the program to serve one another to bring other people into the program that yeah. that were eligible with it so you know by the time we kind of got i kind of got done with my time there you know i had a we had a council together and it was basically i would sit back and i'd be like okay single marine program president what do you want to do well we want to go yeah. here we want to go there well, I have the money for you. I can you know, organize that for you, get the Marines together, now plan it. So we started getting Lance Corporal starting to plan and organize events. So when they became corporals and sergeants, they knew how to, they knew, we, I hope that they learned through that experience how to find, when you have an event, how to find the hidden movements to make that event successful. You know, because yeah. you may need to do A, B, and C, you know, but in between A, B, and C, you need A, TAC 1, A, TAC 2, A, TAC 3 to make right. A happen. So th- helping them to see those those kind of movements. Um, so that's kind of what I did. Um, yeah, and it was very important in my opinion uh, because those are individuals that necessarily wouldn't get, well, possibly get the leadership opportunity, but not necessarily always. Oh, exactly. And you're giving them some insight that you had from years and years and years of experience of of, of that one tac A, one tac two, whatever, whatever. and uh, being able to address those things with those those young individuals and be able to point them in the right direction. That's an incredible uh, yeah. act at Marine Corps. One of the hugest takeaways I took away from from um, my time with recruit training is is knowing the hidden movements because you could have a training schedule. But uh-huh. there are, but when you have these six things on a training schedule, 
to get to take care of task one and two, there may there may be ten hidden movements. Yeah, and and that kind of helped me organize commitments and keep good relations in the community with you know with between the band and whatever you know commitment we're doing, whether that be on base in, or in town, is mm-hmm. it really helped me open my eyes to see that okay, I may have these three things to accomplish, but it takes twenty seven things in mm-hmm. order to make these three things happen to be successful. And, yeah. and that's what, um, that's what we would always call um, the hidden movements, you know? Mm-hmm. So always find the hidden movements to make those, um, those tasks. Successful. So, yeah. but um, yeah, but we got, we got back from that tour in that tour in Al-Assad went to first Marine division. Um, they wanted to keep me home for about a year. And I asked the command, can you please send me right away? Because I, I just don't want to be home away for another, you know, holiday season. And they accommodated that. So about a six month later, after I reported into um, Camp Pendleton, they sent me and a group of, I think there was about 18 Marines, 15, 18 Marines. They sent us over to augment uh, headquarters company, fifth Marines. And we oh, found wow. ourselves in Fallujah. Yeah. We found ourselves in Fallujah. Okay. So I'll, I'll yeah, we were with him. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, fifth Marines. That's where we're at. Go ahead. All right. So, like I said, we found ourselves again. Uh, like I said, we were augmented headquarters, uh, headquarters company, fifth Marines, um, and uh, we ended up uh, finding ourselves uh, in Fallujah. So we had um, uh, that was a much more different deployment than 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 any other ones. I mean, all those, were, all the other ones were very. Uh, Every every deployment was was unique in their own way. This one was was definitely unique in itself. Is we had a we had a section of of Marines in the band that created a convoy security detail for the headquarters. Uh, then we had another one that was a security t- detail for EOD. Um, okay. A lot of people don't you know, and and the way I have to explain that is. Uh, you know, you have your EOD team that's really, for us, uh, the EOD team was focused on, you know, disarming whatever kind of, you know, ID or, you know, threat that, that was there. But in order for them to focus that, they had a security t- t- detail watching, you know, for them, you know, whether that be, you know, um, others trying to engage or trigger man or anything like that. So um, there were the band guys protecting band marines protecting uh uh or our marines i should say protecting the eod team that was there. Right. so we're getting we're getting calls out for nine lines and stuff like that uh and then we had um another detachment of marines at the what we what they called the cmoc which was uh central military operations center from, from what i remember is um when it was it was also a voting location from what i under, from what i remember uh, yeah. In Fallujah, so you y'all remember the purple finger? You know, mm-hmm. all the you remember we, they they got the purple finger. The the Iraqis to vote, they had the purple finger, and and they went into the voting facility. Well, it was it was our Marines that were our band Marines that were attached to fifth Marines that were screening these Iraqis to come in and vote at the CMOC. So, wow. and then we had yeah. And the thing is, is is if we remember anything of Fallujah, we had this thing called the pizza slice, which basically it's where the two adjoining. Where two major adjoining roads connected. I don't remember the two, two um, yeah. the the two names of the, of the roads, but you know it came in and it created a pizza slice. You know when you overlooked it, it looked like a pizza slice in, in Fallujah, right in the heart of the right in the center, heart center of Fallujah was uh, a detachment of of our Marines uh, there, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and that's that's where they stayed. I mean we we really didn't uh, we really we would visit them, but they really kind of would never come back because that's where they were. Cause in order for, you know, you had to have one replace another for, for one to go back to, you know, the, the major, what we call the mech, the major facility out there to, right. to, um, to, to get a breather out there. So, you know, what did Ramon do? Um, you know, uh, I was a gunny at the time. So uh-huh. uh, they assigned me, as, they assigned me as a company gar- gunnery sergeant for that, uh, for a, the headquarters element for fifth Marines. So okay. that's, that, that's kind of what I did. And, you know, I, I did my camp commandant duties cause I was part of the assignment as well, uh-huh. but you know, everything, everything else, you know, I, 
it became a really busy job for me because everything else that went along with being a company gunner sergeant um, and then a camp commandant was kind of you know, my role during yeah. that thing. So visiting Marines, getting them supplies, going out with them, you know, wherever they were going, you know, uh-huh. and then as long as, and then also coming back to the, to the major or to the camp um, and taking care of whatever, you know, housing or building or, you know, um, resources that they needed there as well. So, wow. um, and, and yeah, how, and then long that, you, yeah. how long were you there for that deployment? I was about there for six, seven months, six, six seven. seven. Yes. Well, I was there for about six or seven months. And then, uh, then the other 15 members of the band came and we kind of did a rotation. So uh-huh. they stayed and did kind of the same things. And then, you know, then we went home and we, we reestablished what they left off as, you know, the, you know, as, as, as being a musical unit, uh, for uh-huh. first Marine, for first Marine division. Uh, and, and that is where, you know, and it was when, when I got back, you know, it was, it was time for the, the warrant officer to, when we transitioned, the warrant officer came over and then the warrant officer came over to Fallujah. And then I went back and it was, you know, for me, it, it was just me and we probably had 25 Marines with, uh-huh. you know, I had, a, I had a small command staff. But it was me and 25 Marines, you know, standing, restanding up the band um, after the other half left. And we redeployed back and taking over, you know, missions and, and stuff like that. You know, I had a really good support network there with, with the staff NCOs. Um, but, you know, we all we all worked really hard. You know, we had we just dist- we established a basic daily routine with hidden movements, you know, to accomplish <laughs> the movement of the day. We did. We actually did. We actually yeah. did. We had, a, we had a normal operating, you know, basic daily routine you know, when we didn't have commitments and then, you know, we started slipping in commitments. And I, I think we're, we're pretty successful and, and just a lot of good Marines, um, you know, Mike Duguid, Devin Van, um, you know, we're, we're a couple of, you know, great people that supported me and, uh, Hey, Rob Merrickie, an old friend of ours. Yeah, that's right. Was, was, was very, a, a huge, huge, um, support there as well. You know, um, that was kind of the, the core command team as I was, serving as both staff in COIC and acting OIC during mm-hmm. that time. So they were, they were really huge, but we all worked really hard, uh, mm-hmm. you know, to, you know, what, what we would call making, you know, making it happen. You know, yeah. some people call it, you know, got, you know, grinding the shot, you know, grinding it up, you know, yeah. you, doing. you know, but yeah. Um, yeah. Even during that time we got tagged with doing the uh, Ford's oh. funeral. As well, when President Ford really? passed away, yeah, oh okay. yeah, yeah, that, that that call came out of nowhere. We literally, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but you know, and you would know this, you know, having uh-huh. the presidents. It was it Reagan and Ford. The band uh-huh. actually had what we called the football. Remember the football? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Which which was was really just a little black briefcase with all the music that the president and his family had selected to play whatever songs. Uh-huh. That were going to be part of the funeral. So, you know, we had a little, um, you know, football and, and I did Reagan's funeral. So we did a little football, but then, you know, I got that phone call um, when Ford passed away and literally, you know, every leave, every Liberty, everything was canceled. And we uh-huh. literally within 24 hours, you know, grabbed the football, our uniforms, and we're on the bus on the way to Port Wyneme to be with the rest of the military detachments for um, Ford's funeral. Yeah. Uh, from you know, him coming and going from uh, Port Wainini. You know, so right. yeah. I, yep. I remember uh, for 29 Palms, my first duty station, right? Uh, we did rehearsals uh, for that specific thing. And it was all hush hush, you know, and it, nobody's supposed to know or whatever. But it was a constant thing. Every year we did rehearsals for it because, hey, we knew that a president was going to pass away and we were going to have to do something for it. Uh, and now, you didn't get any of those uh, experiences of doing the rehearsals. It was just a, hey, go and do this, right? Uh, well, so were you there for Fords as well? No, I wasn't there for Fords, no. So, no, I mean, so just to kind of put it into perspective is that as soon as that happens, everybody's gathered together, you pack and you go, you mm-hmm. know, and you're really within, you know, 
you try to gather everybody within 12 hours. You know, back then it was, you, I, if I remember, it was like within 12 hours, gather everybody, you're on a mm-hmm. bus, you're gone. And and right. we were gone. We are gone to Port Wyneme and we were there within the first 24 hours. We got bedded down and they put us all in these huge warehouses because everybody was stuffed in there. And then uh-huh. we spent, we spent, uh, we spent one or two days underneath an, an Air Force One um, mm-hmm. plane. No, well, it was an Air Force One, but it was the, it was a plane. Mm-hmm. Um, and we would practice with the details. And then I think we may have gone over it three or four times. And, yeah. You know, and then it was, you know, then, then it was, then it was, it was televised. It was it? Yeah. You know, it was it. You know, and then once once that was done, and and the president went to, um, you know, went to uh, uh, D.C. Then, mm-hmm. uh, you know, then then we were, you know, th- that was it for that. But yeah, he always he had to come back because he would he was late right. he was interned. Yeah, he was interned back in California. So guess what? We're back up at Port Wyneme mm-hmm. uh, for that. Um, for that evolution. And uh, one, one part of the band was at Port Wyneme to receive. And then another mm-hmm. part of the band was somewhere to in turn. Uh, mm-hmm. Same thing happened with Reagan's funeral. Yeah. Because one part of the band was in Port Wyneme to receive. And then I think mm-hmm. another portion, which was uh, another portion was um, at the, at the Reagan library for the internment. Now that was the same band with you. I for Reagan's funeral, I was with the uh, with the third mob band, with the third okay. mob band, and I was actually playing. I, one more day, yeah, I was playing. Yeah, and I was actually playing trumpet for that one, um, but for right. Ford's funeral, I I was I was I was conducting the band for Ford's funeral. And that's that's something I think that uh, a lot of people don't realize is the the military bands and and what the. Uh, what they actually have to do when it comes to, you know, president's funerals, things of that nature uh, and, and the standby and the, the almost like no notice whatsoever. Hey, pack your stuff. We got to go uh, type of thing. And, and that, that's one of the big things that the bands do. You know what? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, in my experience, you know, when I went back, you know, let's rewind back to my school of music, they would always tell us as young Marines, you know, the general is going to call you and you got to be, you know, at his house for a party in a half hour or you, you know, or you're going to yeah. get called for a change of command and you're all going to have to all get together with an end hour and be over there. Yeah. You know, honestly, that, that never happened to me, you know, yeah. but what did happen to me was that phone call, you know, for that funeral to, to, you know, every, to pack it up and go, every other pack it up and go was for deployments, you know, but this one in particular right. was, you know, this one, this one is in particular was, was, uh, was Ford's, was Ford's, you know, it was like, literally I, I had the football in my office and literally I, I grabbed my, uh, my Val pack Mm-hmm. And uh, what, what, which you know, Val pack is remember the Val packs, the green suitcase, clothing bag, yeah, yeah. yeah. Grab my Val pack, you know, with my uniforms in it and the football, and we're off. And you know, and, and then of course, you know, you, you're getting emails with coordinating instructions and yeah. stuff like that concerning it. And then, then, of course, before you leave, everybody in the chain of command wants to talk to you, so yeah, but yeah, that yeah. was that was kind of that, yeah, that was kind of that experience, you know, with that, you know, um. You know, it it was good coming back from. It was good coming back from that deployment. I mean, because coming back from that deployment was a little difficult. Uh, yeah. From the Fallujah deployment, all of them were, you know, but that one was was more so than any other. But being able to, um, I was able to, you know, the the high op tempo that I had as a company gunny, you know, mm-hmm. I kind of had that same high op tempo being such a small unit with such a high op of commitments. Cause it's like, Oh my gosh, the band is back. Let's boom, 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 boom. Yeah. You know, let's get them going. You know, let's get them working. So we, we still had a high operational tempo. So transitioning yeah. back and forth, you know, what, what I missed was I missed the Marines, the 15 Marines that were still back there. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the Marines that I was with, you know, here, but I miss the ones that were still back there. Um, because for a lot of us, it wasn't really all of it wasn't really over until all fifty of us were back together in the same unit. 
So right. it was just, it was, yeah. So, but Reagan's funeral um, was Reagan's funeral. Well, I'm sorry. Ford's funeral was, was, was pretty something out of really cool, you know, first Marine division. There were a couple of other things that we did at the, you know, towards the end of that tour, um, got to be on an episode of Gene Simmons, family jewels. Uh, yeah, that was, that was, yes, yeah, that was really neat. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. Yeah. So jealous I, of all that. Yeah. I don't know how it came about, but I mean, you know, I was, I was responsible and in charge, but Rob Merrickin really handled all the, the inner logistics of, mm-hmm. of that movement. But, you know, there was an episode where Gene Simmons daughter wanted to join the military and, right. you know, he came and he sang on stage and we got to march in and we played the service hymns with Gene Simmons and Tommy Thayer. And then that was a really cool gig. That, that was really cool. Uh, and uh, You're yeah, that, playing that, like, like it was nothing. That was an incredible thing. And I, I remember getting the phone call and be like, oh, hey, the band's going to be doing this. And I was like, oh, my God, why? Why did I get yeah. orders somewhere else? Because you guys were there with freaking, oh my God. And it, it was amazing. And uh, I, I remember watching it and, and you know, I, I had it recorded. I've watched it several different times. It was amazing. Like you guys getting to play with them. Yeah, it was really neat. I mean, that kind of, you know, that kind of um, concert rocking gig kind uh-huh. of, you know, Kind of was at the same level of when I was with the with the with the Marine Corps Recruit Depot Band San Diego, and we did um, we did a super fest, which was uh-huh. it was it was the it was a Super Bowl celebration in the gas lamp quarter in San Diego. Okay. The last time the Super Bowl was in San Diego, big rocking uh-huh. stage. You know, we got up there. We're singing. We had a rock band. And yeah. we're singing up there and people are rocking away. And so those kind of things, you know, were, were kind of on the same level, um, you know, and, you know, and, and there's, there's just the, the Marine Corps has given, you know, if, if you allow yourself the Marine Corps and, and the military can, can give you a lot of great opportunities. I mean, there's these, these lifelong experiences that I've had, um, mm-hmm. you know, I've, I've had educational opportunities, not only through training, but, you know, I, before I got out, you know, I, I had my undergraduate degree, you know, uh-huh. thanks to the Corps, um, and thanks to the military, you know. Um, but, yeah, just a lot of blessings, you know. You know, not, and, you know, I'm, I'm all talking great peaches and cream and opportunities. But, you know, there were, there were you know, there were also some, some difficult times, you know, everything yeah. from, you know, being tired and feet hurting, you know, to, you know, to, you know, um, those times that, you know, we kind of all experienced, you know, after – you know, after, you know, after deployments and stuff like that, you know, and, Absolutely. you know, think, things difficult to talk about, you know, um, you know, kind of go to kind of spin off of that and, you know, move. Um, well, I'll, I'll get to that. Well, once I'll get to that later, but once I, once I, um, once I left, um, once all this occurred and the band was uh-huh. put back together and, and was put back together in Sandy in, in Camp Pendleton, uh-huh. um, I got an opportunity to go teach at the school of music and okay. um, the, the Marine Corps said, you know what? Um, three deployments in about, you know, I think it was three deployments in two years, I think maybe, um, maybe, maybe three and three, I, you know, it's been so long. <laughs> I wish I could put the, put it back, you know, put the timeline back together, but I, you know, it's, it's been so long. Um, the Marine Corps decided, well, you're, you're about done. You know, you uh-huh. need to go, you need to go rest for a while. So I went to go be a, the conducting instructor uh, at the school of music. And then later to be where you're getting ready to retire from now uh, as a yeah. senior enlisted advisor, I'm um, at the school of music. And then it was off to civilian life after that. Yeah. So uh, you did how many years here at the school of music before you retired? Uh I showed up in 2000. It was, it was kind of unique. I showed up in 2008 as an instructor and uh-huh. usually, and, and it was three to five years. I am going back to the West coast. Right. Um, but, but you know, the Marine Corps ended not ended up not moving me, uh-huh. uh, but gave me other opportunities in the school of music. So I start off as an, as an instructor. Um, as a, teaching as a master, is that right? 
I was a gunny at the time. You were a gunny. Okay. I was a gunny. I was a gunny. And then I picked up master sergeant and I was still uh-huh. conducting instructor. Um, and I was a division head as well. Okay. Um, at that, at that time, um, at that time there was a master gunny retiring. Uh-huh. Um, Matthew Farquhar was retiring and he gave me the yeah. opportunity to kind of kind of sit in his seat as a senior enlisted advisor. Um, mm-hmm. And then shortly after that, I picked up master gunnery sergeant and became okay. the senior enlisted advisor. So, and then in 2013, um, I retired. So okay. it seems like a long time, but then I had this position, this position, and then this position. Yeah. And that was all within what, like a four year period, three year period. Uh, well, for, you figure 2008 to 2013. Okay. <clears throat> so in, in 2000, in 2000, um, in 2008, I went as a gunny. Uh-huh. Um, well, it, it, July 2008, I was at the School of Music as a gunny. Yeah. December of December of 2008, I was selected for master sergeant and then picked up uh-huh. master sergeant. Okay. And and. Just the way things happened, and I, this is another blessing. Just the way things happened, about about eighteen months later, I was selected for master gunnery sergeant. Yeah, and that eighteen months. Eighteen pretty, months. Yeah, and I I don't know for all MOSs, but for the band field, that seems to be a, a pretty common thing. So going from gunny to master sergeant takes an incredibly a long time, and then master sergeant to master gunny is a fairly short time typically speaking yeah yeah and then and then i did my three years as mm-hmm. a master gunnery sergeant and then and then uh and and then transitioned out of the corps yeah you know, and that was as the senior enlisted here at this uh in virginia yep. Beach. yeah and now yep, i was oh, a senior advisor so as you look back over your career right and and you think about it like what were some of the the most important lessons learned uh, that you can put in part onto that maybe that next generation as they're going through and, and what were some of the things that you, that you would like to leave everybody with, with that? Oh my Lord. Um, <laughs> you know, like I said in the last podcast, you know, I don't, I don't think I'm smart enough to have a 12 step, you know, 12 step process to success, but the only thing I can speak to, you know, every veteran out there or everybody out there is, um, some of the life lessons I've learned from some pretty smart people. Mm-hmm. One of them is, and one of them is my pops, you know, yeah. um, remember your roots, remember mm-hmm. where you came from. Um, and always reflect on that. Another one is from, a, another one is from a awesome um, staff sergeant that I, that worked for me or that work, we worked together. Um, he was actually my junior drill instructor, um, Michael Mack. He's, he's a sergeant. He's, he retired as a sergeant major, Michael Mack. He would always say, see the drill instructor. We just got to treat people how we want to be, how we want to be treated. Ooh, treat people yeah. like you want to be treated, man. And that goes a long way, even in today's yeah. world, man. Yeah. You know, a lot of times we just look at our fellow Marines or our, or our fellow persons sitting across the table. We just look at each other and say, you know, we're going to treat, I'm going to treat you like I want to be treated. Yeah. Um, you know, this may sound cliche, but, but honor, courage, and commitment, <laughs> honor, courage, and commitment. Yeah. So, and then there, there was, and I said this during the, 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 the podcast that we did with, with the, with the marriage thing is mm-hmm. there was, there was some things I always told the Marines when they would check in um, with me is I would always say um, healthy mind, healthy body, healthy spirit. Mm-hmm. will go a long way and that all that all kind of interconnects with with co- your core values and then there was something i picked up from um my scouting experience that i have as a scout leader that i had with not marine corps scout but right. as a but as a boy scout leader with with my kids and i was going through and i was leading some adult and youth leadership programs with them and they had a motto they had a motto that was easily transferable to what I would tell Marines checking in. Uh-huh. And that was three words. That was three, no, three words. It was, we, and we had it on the back of a t-shirt. It said, be, no, do. What a be, Marine should 
be, what mm-hmm. a Marine should know, and what a Marine should do. So right. We would have be, no, do. Be, no, do. And and you know what? Um, I think I think you gave me a, a picture of like a, 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 a placard that was at the School of Music with my face on it. It, yeah. it had my it had my bio and then on the bottom it had a model that I had and said be no do. I, yeah. I think you gave me that framed up. That was kind of a cool gift. I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and then you know, and then for veterans or for others that have had experiences that you know that yeah, I know I'm saying a lot here, but you know, no, we have fine. some people. Have some, going. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you know, and you, you, you know, at the end of your podcast, you always talk about, you know, you know, if you feel, you know, um, like you need to talk to somebody, you know, talk to somebody or make that phone call, you know, mm-hmm. dial that 1 800 number, you know, I, you know, that, that's all important, you know, there were, there were, you know, I, I don't think I ever, you know, said this to anybody, but I went to go um, to a, kind of, a, I was invited to a seminar to, this pastor by the last, his first name is Nigel. He's written a couple of books, um, okay. but it was one meeting and it was one conversation I had with him. And, you know, uh, he always, and then we're talking about levels, you know, how some of us may not think that our experience was in the military or on deployment or, you know, during combat operations were, Right. You know, was it, you know, others are so much, you know, worse off than I am, or, you know, I don't need to talk about it because there's others that need to talk about it. So I'm going to put myself, you know, back or, you know, um, should I feel this way? Because it's not, you know, what, what the television shows as, you know, being like, you know, really, you know, really, you know, really intense, mm-hmm. you know, or, or was it really, was it really what I'm feeling? Is it really real? You know, that Mm -hmm. I need to talk about it. So um, Nigel, and I asked Nigel that question. And Nigel said simply to me, have you ever had a paper cut? And I says, of course. He said, does it hurt? I said, yeah, paper cuts hurt. He says, yeah. Wow. That's really, really good. Really good. Yeah, and I was like, it was a huge aha factor that, allowed me to come home and maybe talk about some things, you know, Mm -hmm. with the one person that probably understands me the most, Mm -hmm. um, but, but didn't understand. And that was my wife. What what I say, what didn't understand was what was going on. Mm -hmm. I don't understand what's going on when you talk to me. And some of us may get that, but Nigel helped me really understand, you know, um, have you ever had a paper cut before? Well, yeah, of course I have. Does it hurt? Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah that yeah that, I, I shut up there and i was really like yeah I, I yeah nigel uh yeah you know so it, it kind of made things a little bit you know i you know and everybody has various levels but it, it kind of made it a little bit easier you know mm-hmm. in, in some aspects you know and and i will never try to and none of us should ever try to equate you know or compare you know there there are experiences there there are paper cuts no no matter how you know, how big or small they are, but somehow they still hurt. So what you end your podcast with every, you know, every time, you know, talk to somebody, call somebody. And and I think that's, that's important. You know, that, that in itself is a lost art. Talking to somebody. Yeah. Not not texting, not posting, you know, I, you know, I'm a social, you know, I, I get on social media and I, you know, I do website stuff, you know, but, you know, but that, that's, you know, the spit shiny boots and the, the brass polishing, you know, yeah, sure. The high and tights, you know, that, that sure. Okay. If you want to call those lost art in some aspects, they are, but for us in and out, sometimes that lost art is just talking to somebody. So, yeah. you know, man, that's, you know, get on the horse. It used to be like this, but now it's like, get on the horn. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, this, yeah. But that's right. Get on the horn and, and talk to somebody. That's you know, right. Yeah. God bless you all, man. Yeah. And, and, and you're hundred percent right. Like that, that is one of the things that uh, I, I think we've lost along the way. Uh, as you look at um, it, how easy it is on social media to get on and, and you say things. And then I, I don't know how many times I've gotten on and said something and then people just attack and they, you know, everything is so polarized nowadays, you know, uh, and, 
and it is a tough, tough go sometimes, you know, and, and as a veteran, you think one way and then, you know, the major, maybe the majority of your friends that you grew up with or whatever, they think another way. And, and it does make it difficult, but I will say that you have to be able to spend time and, and talk to people that understand what you've been through, you know, and that's, that's, it's a lot that like, uh, like me and you sitting down right now and, and having this conversation is that you've gone through some things. I've gone through some things that were very similar and we can sit down and have a conversation and understand each other. Uh, and I think that's important for veterans to understand. Yeah. And, you know, and sometimes, you know, I know, I, you know, we, we all have one of these, you know, and I know uh -huh. we got a long, we have a long list of contacts and a long list of people that we still have. We know it's their phone uh -huh. numbers and, and we need to, you know, we need to call them, uh -huh. you know, or we, we want to reconnect. So, you know, so it's okay to spend five minutes of your time and, and pick up that phone and take five minutes and just say, Hey, I was thinking about you, you know, yeah. Um, you know, I was thinking about you, you know, some, you know, some, you know, some female Marines that I've served with, you know, it's taking that time and, you know, even, you know, it's, it's, sometimes it's using social media. I get it. You know, they just had a baby. They've been out. We served together. Congratulations, your baby. Hey, Master Gunny, good hearing from me. Thank you. And it's done yeah. with that, you know, that those, those are, you know, what it is sometimes, you know, you know, sometimes it's just picking up the phone and, and, and calling somebody, you know, kind of like how, you know, how we, you, you found yourself in the area, you know, yeah. I, I, you know, actually, I think you sent me a Facebook message and, you, and I was like, Hey, how's it going? <laughs> You're back in the area. I told you, you'd be yeah. back. So, you know, give me your number. That's and right. then, you, know, you know, here we are, you know, so yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, life is, um, I think life is, uh, you know, golly from, you know, ninth from, Las Cruces, New Mexico to now, you know, I, I give, I give all the glory to God, you know, uh -huh. and, and bringing me, you know, and helping me and, and giving me a family and, 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 a, and a spouse that, that understands and uh -huh. that's supportive of me, you know, they're, they're all gifts and friends and colleagues and people that I've come across with. And, and then now, you know, in my, in my, you know, my transition life, you know, still being able to, you know, to, to do something to, you know, to help the force out and, yeah. uh, and then still play music too. I still do. I still do some music on the side as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I will tell everybody it, it's a great thing. If you can get into music or you can get into some type of thing that uh, kind of takes you away from the norm, right. That, that everyday activity or whatever that you have going on, not necessarily a bad thing, whether that be acting, whether co comedy, man, there's so many Marines get that get out. Oh Yeah. Of comedy and stuff uh but uh and playing musical instruments that's that's a fantastic way to uh, to kind of help uh reinvigorate uh yourself and, and uh just make yourself feel more at ease with what's going on around you but the biggest thing and you mentioned this earlier was just talking to people you know uh reaching out and saying something saying hi to somebody and that that's one of the big things that i always do it, it it's something incredibly small like i now, granted, the only thing I do on social media is Facebook. I'm not very good at all the other ones. I am. <laughs> I, I just don't understand them. But Facebook, I, you know, I, I, every day I click on the search button and then I hit uh, birthdays, right? And and every day there's somebody's birthday. And it's just a quick message of, hey, happy birthday. And so many times I, I've sent a message out. It just said happy birthday. And a person responds. And then all of a sudden you know, all kinds of crazy, extraordinary things happen from a simple, just happy birthday. And, and that's what we have to remember as veterans is that reaching out and saying something to somebody is, is maybe their lifeline that keeps them going and keeps them doing what they're supposed to do, uh, at, at, you know, as a, as a good, uh, good citizen as we move forward in life. And it's just, yeah, I, I don't know. You, you, know, that's one of the you never, say. you know, you know, you, you never know who you're going to come in contact with, you know, what you're going to do for a person. Um, and you never know what kind of influence. I just had a conversation with a business owner today. Uh, she, she owns a restaurant and, uh, she's, she is a veteran. She owns a restaurant in Hampton Roads area. Um, and, uh, she was talking about how she served a, um, to somebody and let her know. 
a note on the napkin, you know, and it's kind of a concept of a, this, um, of a, of a, of a song I'm writing and we're still working on it here, uh -huh. but um, how this individual wrote on the note saying that, you know, he walked into that restaurant. Um, we don't know if it's a veteran or not, you know, uh -huh. again, you don't know who you're going to come in contact with, you know, but talk to people, but left the message on the note saying that this was supposed to be my last meal. But after talking to you and the meal that I have, I know that I find value, um, that I have value in this world. So wow. you just, you just, yeah, just, you know, you and I had this conversation, uh -huh. you know, um, earlier, but, you know, just, you know, get out and talk to people, you know, find that contact and reach out to that individual um, and, and just say, hello, after all these years. And I'm, I'm just, yeah. I'm just thinking about you. That's yeah. all you got to say. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. And it goes a long my way. Wife, oh yeah. My wife's really good at that. You know, just saying, Hey, I'm just thinking about you. And the conversation lasts about five or 10 minutes. And then you move along with your day. You know, yeah. it, it has, it has a lot of value, you know, I, I think with people as well. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I'll be honest. Yeah, I know you said you're working on a song. I, I'm going to have to have you back on the podcast in the near future. You're going to have to sing the song. Uh, and, you know, uh, I, I mean, I, it's an incredible, incredible thing what you're talking about there. And, and I think it's going to be one of those songs that's just perfect uh, for our veteran community. I'd like to bring it. I'd like to bring it to this podcast as its first time hearing uh, or first time, you know, hearing it. Um, we're still working. I'm still working on, on the concept of putting some, putting the story together. It, it is mm -hmm. going to be country music based. It's kind of like what I do. Well, you've played with me before, you know, I kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, do some country music on the side, you know? So, you know, uh, you know, if I can give a shout out, you know, we're doing, uh, you know, we look at Facebook, Poncho music, seven, five, seven. Um, you know, I do country music around the area. Yeah, I got to throw in the plug, you know. We're building a no, website. that's all good. That's, that's not a big surprise, for, but you got to come play with me again. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Um, you got to come play with me again. We've got a couple of venues and everything like that. That, But, you know, come join me again, but I'd love to come back after um, it's completed. And, um, you know, for all I care, you can use you can utilize it as an anthem for your for your podcast. So, yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. I will say uh, I've gone out several times now uh, to uh, uh, listen to you play and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. It's been a great time. I think you put on a fantastic show uh, and, and for any, any of the veterans out there, I will tell you right now that uh, veterans supporting veterans is a, is a great thing. So go out. If, if you see it, uh, it's, it's Poncho Music. Is that correct? Poncho Music. It's um, Poncho Music. It, yeah. So if you just uh, Facebook at Poncho Music 757, um, you'll see me, you know, there. Um, I have my hat on and everything. But being from Las Cruces, New Mexico, it's for real, you know, and the boots are stuffed and dirty as well. <laughs> but here's here's the interesting thing about Poncho. OK, if, if I may throw a plug in there. Yeah, go, is ahead. That, go ahead. OK, that was that was that was it's a funny story. But that was that was um, when I was with uh, head, headquarters uh, company Fifth Marines. The first sergeant gave me that co call sign. So on the radio, oh. hey Pancho. So that was my call sign back in the day. And, and everybody on the camp in the command, you know, hey Pancho, hey Pancho, hey Pancho. So you know, Vietnam back in the day, that was my dad's call sign. And if anybody what? knows, and anybody, yeah, it is. Anybody knows out there, nobody, no, you don't give your, well, you really don't give yourself a call sign. It's given to you. So mm -hmm. years, years ago, Vietnam, my dad's call sign was Poncho. I'm forward deployed. My call sign is Poncho. Poncho. Fast forward, good 20 years later, my son is in the military. He's with the 31st Mew. He's in Kuwait. Guess what call sign they give him? No kidding. Pancho. Pancho. So it's ah. kind of like, so it, 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 so it was like, you know, when I, when I was figuring out, okay, what's the, what's the, what's the stage name? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pancho. No, no questions <laughs> asked. Yeah. It'll make sense. yeah no, it, it just kind of stuck, man. It stuck. That is, you know? that is an awesome, awesome story. Yeah. So right. at Pancho Music 757, we're, we're, we're creating a website, you know, that's going to list, you know, various things. And, you know, you know, um, after this podcast, um, I'm going to ask my webmaster, um, that's working on it. Maybe she can, uh, 
you know, put a tab on there with some veteran resources yeah, up there yeah. and then um, a link to your uh, webpage and uh, your podcast would be something I would ask to be linked there as well. That's awesome. Well, thank you very much for that. I appreciate sure, it. Sure. Absolutely. You got great ideas. See, we got together, we got to talking and, you know, we collaborate, came up with a great idea. I, I'm telling you, that's the way it goes because I, I have to rely on everybody else's great ideas because mine are not always the great. So I have yeah, to rely on you. So I appreciate it. Uh, no, <laughs> hey, uh, Ramon, man, I, I owe so much to you and uh, I appreciate what you've done for the Marine Corps. appreciate what you've done for the nation and, and such a great uh, family man as well. Uh, great example for individuals to look up to. So thank you for what you've done. Uh, thanks for coming on the podcast. Uh, if, is there anything else you want to leave all the listeners who uh, have been listening this whole time? With? What would you leave them with? Oh, my God. Um, whether you're in the military or you're out, whatever you do, um, be no do. <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay awesome well hey thanks very much uh poncho music 757 right poncho 757 is that right or poncho music 757 poncho music 757 be sure to reach out to him uh he needs more gigs he needs to work more so make him get out there and work work even harder playing his music he, he does a fantastic job i've been out there i've seen it uh, I got to play with him a little bit. He entertained me and and let me play up there with him. So it's been a fantastic uh, thing. So please reach out, uh, Poncho Music seven five seven. Come out, come out Thursday night at Anchor Alley's. You can join me, um, and then uh, on Saturday, Armed Forces Brewing Company in Norfolk. You're more than welcome on stage to join me, my friend. There you go. And I, hey, I would love to be there. Hey. Uh, Everybody out there, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate your support. And, and I know that you guys are going to do uh, – keep keep moving on and keep pushing for, for all of the veterans out there. Uh, if you are struggling and you need some help, dial 988. Uh, hit option one. That's going to put you in contact with somebody that's going to help you if you're struggling and you need help with uh, suicide or anything, any thoughts of that nature. Uh, you can also dial, and I'm going to pull up my notes, but uh, eight. Woo, wow, that's not the right notes. I will pull up the correct notes eventually. Yeah. Um, okay. 838255. Again, that's 838255. Uh, I apologize. But uh, for everyone out there, the VA, again, has an incredible site. Uh, go to that. That's veteranscrisisline.net. Again, that's veteranscrisisline.net. And if you're you're younger, you like to chat online and all that type of stuff, go ahead and uh, get on there. Uh, they have that ch chat icon. All you got to do is click on it. All you got to do is talk about what you feel comfortable talking about. They're going to put you in contact with whoever you need. <clears throat> one veteran uh, lost is one too many. So please, please, please reach out, uh, whether that's to me, that whether that's to uh, Master Gunner Sergeant Retire via whoever it may be, but reach out to somebody and ask for help. We're here for you, and uh, we want the best for you. So for everybody out there, thanks for what you do. Master Gunner Sergeant Retired via, thank you for being on the podcast and sharing your story. It was much appreciated. I appreciate you having me, Andrew. That's awesome. Hey, uh, for all of you, uh, stay tuned for the rest of the week. We have some great stuff coming up. Stay motivated. Change your socks. <laughs>